Puts up a tough shot. Bounces it up. Goes in at the buzzer. Working it down to two on a deep three. Oh, it's proclamation. That's how you want a game. It's proclamation. We hustle every day to find picks. You can tell us if you want to get rich. It's proclamation. We robbing underdog and prize picks. We the best in this biz. You ain't telling us shit. It's proclamation. We love making money quick, fast, cooking up a team card. The whole crew about to smash. It's proclamation. We do it for the fam, so everybody let's catch. The dopest team you ever seen. Winning money, stacking G's. Bookies setting traps, but they'll never catch me. Some people get addicted like rats to the cheese. But I got one obligation to bring Johnny to his knees. Holding back the props till the morning he knows. They'll be fishing in the shack, plotting nukes with the Bros, only with crawl, never reload On the middle of the map, I'm Migos We go with honest, we seeking the bloods We know when I fucking cheat go Party that I'm sweating, they can't be good for my health Some might call it making bets, I call it investing in myself I'm picking props like stocks, population for the win Got my slips in by the buzzer now, let the games begin It's population It's population We do it for the fans, so everybody let's catch! Hey, yo! What up? Yo, yo, what's up, guys? How we doing? Chilling, bro. How you doing? You were sick last time. You good now? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. There um, we go. Much better, but glad to be back on. It's been a while. Um, last stream of NBA this season. Let's do it. Um, what do we got? Five games? Five games. Want a recap? Do we? Let's look at it. All right. All poor place smash today man uh we loved um chet's first half fantasy window wemby he crushed that with wemby playing and now wemby was out that was pretty easy pretty much had that done in the first quarter mobley got it done his first half fantasy in the first quarter donovan almost got there in the first quarter um yeah big uh bounce back spot for him and uh if lfx is here shout out to him i think he put three units on his uh 20 and a half points that worked out pretty well for him i think um, hero thank gosh they bumped him to 27 and a half pa because he hooked to 27 uh, i think uh he opened before the rozier news at 25 and a half and then uh gobert your man Talked about loved his fantasy upside here he crushed last time against Jokic and no cat competitive game playoff preview potentially and yeah he got it done for us I'm always hesitant to play him but underrated said let's roll with it so yeah he came what about big two big two said roll with it yeah yeah he likes some, some go bear um Trey man I loved his first half fantasy with Trey Young back just the stock upside. I think he had four four steals in the first half. Crushed that fantasy in the first half. Goodwin wanted his rebounds because he was just a monster on the glass, but he was ruled out. So it was just ended up being a DMP. But yeah. Um we we had a bunch of four picks. Big Sean just just Big Sean just threw in the comment, gonna try to win five bands tomorrow. He's serious. Go for it, bro. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we had some. Uh, yeah, we had some baseball mix today. Oh, it was it was good, very good. Swept uh swept all our plates. So, but let's uh let's talk about this. What five games? Five games. So, no teams on a back to back today, unlike uh, or tomorrow, unlike today, which pretty much every team was on a back to back. Um. Let's start with the first game. Bulls at Pistons. What's our injury update for the Pistons here, the home team carousel? 
the Detroit, the Detroit um, tanking Pistons. Well, we have Cade Cunningham. He's nice and questionable, and he didn't play again last oh, time. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it ends so, up not playing. <laughs> yeah, so who knows about him? Um, same old thing, man. And everyone else is just out, 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 out. Simone out. Isaiah Stewart, Thompson, we already know. Grimes, blah, blah, blah. Same old as yesterday or last game. All right. And then Bulls. Bulls are a little different. Let's see. Caruso and Dasunmu and Drummond are all on the report here. Let's see what they got. Dasun, uh, Caruso is probable. Dasunmu is questionable. I guess he missed the last game too. Yeah, he missed the last game. Yeah. I I think I want to say that we can look it up, but I want to say the Bulls have the they're pretty much locked into that playing game spot. But let's just check. And Rudy, it, uh, not Rudy. I looked up at Big Two saying Rudy. Um, Andre Drummond is doubtful. Okay. And I'm sipping on Crown. And celebrate. There you go. Love it. I I don't think the bull. Yeah, the Bulls and the Hawks can't move up, so they're locked in. They're gonna play each other in the playing game. It'll be the Hawks at the Bulls. So there's really not anything to play for for either side here for the Bulls or the Pistons. Mm. Um, but it's kind of weird because like. They, they, both teams have been pretty much locked in here. Like, I get why the Hawks played some of their starters today, kind of like a dress rehearsal, like with Trey Young being back and having not having played in a, while, a long time, getting back in the flow with the team. But the Bulls have still been playing their guys like heavy minutes, and I don't know why they're bored. Like, DeRozan's still playing like big minutes, yeah, he is. So, at some point, they got to start pulling back on it because the when is the playing game? Let's check the schedule here. I mean, look, I mean, he's been playing like 40 minutes consistently. Yeah. Which, came through, it came through for us too a couple of days ago. Don't get. Yeah, it's fantasy. Um, oh, they don't even show schedule here. Oh, playing tournament. Here we go. Uh, Yeah, see, the Bulls and Hawks clinched a 9 and 10 game. Why does it show? Oh, here we go. So, in about a week. They'll play. Yeah, they'll play next Wednesday. The Bulls and the Hawks. So, I mean, I guess, you know, stay fresh and conditioned to play. But, I mean, other than that, there's no reason to push these guys. So, you know, kind of what we did today, Just I would just stick with first half, man. I, I know it can suck at times if there's, like, foul trouble or just lack of production. But I just worry about especially teams that are locked in their position. I just right. worry about them pull, pulling back on minutes for full game here. And, you know, not that, you know, Bulls blow teams out, but the Pistons, like if K doesn't play, they could easily also get blown out here. So almost 10 point spread. So 
what do we got for the Bulls? Um, I mean, if Io's out again, definitely upside, obviously, for DeRozan and Kobe White. I want to see if Drummond is out. Who's going to pick up more minutes here? Is it, is it going to be someone like Dale and Terry? can't imagine I'm running Booch that long, but who knows. I guess maybe Tory Craig could. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's not going to match up with Wiseman here. When why because he'll check in probably when Wiseman checks in. I mean, Vooch is already playing huge minutes in the first half. Huge. Maybe, maybe he picks up a few more minutes. That looks crazy. Out. What is that right there? Eighteen. That's what. It just looks like a lot of minutes right there for Vooch in the first half. Yeah, I played about. He played eight minutes in the first quarter and about. Yeah. 11 and a half. Crazy. And DeRozan, 42 minutes. Yeah. Kobe White, 42 minutes. I mean, yeah, what do you play? 19 and a half minutes here? I mean, I, I can't imagine picking him any more than that. No. Even with drumming out. No. They probably have some other young guy they can throw in. For Drummond, for size here, um, man, what happened to Vuj? I mean, like he did well in this next game. He scored twenty six points, but his usage rate has just plummeted since that stretch of games where he was like taking twenty plus shots. So, good spot for him. I don't trust him, but. I get it if you want to play him with Drummond out. If he put, picks up maybe even like one or two more minutes here in the first half. And, you know, we always target against uh, Duran here because he's not going to defense. Um, let's see how he's done against the Pistons. Hey, have they removed dunks lately? Is that what's been going on? No, they have them. They just, they, they're they just super limited. And then when they have the guys that we want, they're like super juiced. Mm. Um, oops, let's see. First half came up. This is Pistons. When was the last time they played each other? End of February. Each guy done scoring, no surprise. Yeah, he did. What's his first half here, I? They've put the it juice? low before. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, when he went on that stretch where he was getting fed so much and had, like, massive shot volume, he was up to 18, 18 and a half. Lately, though, I've been tracking him. He's gone all the way down to 15 and a half, 16 and a half, since he's gone through this stretch with, like, very low usage rate. So, it's taxed from what he has been it, by one. Um, but it's back up to what it normally is. I mean, like I said, I mean, if Io's out and Drummond's already rolled out, I totally get it. But let's look at his shot volume lately in the first half. Especially with that last game with Io out. You see, before he, he was taking like double digit shots in the first half, now he's down. Now it's kind of sporadic, but it, is, it looks like it's hovering around seven. Minutes are crazy. It's kind of, it's kind of concerning that his rebounds are so down too. You know you don't want to play no damage. Yeah, right. Like. I, I don't, but I get it, man. It's the Pistons. Uh, I, I, man, I don't know. 
Looking at this, I would I would say what's his points? <laughs> I I would say I, I if I had to if I had to choose if he wanted to play Vuja, I, I would say the points is the best upside here versus Duran's defense. I mean, his, his his rebounding is all over the place, and that's probably because like Kobe White being back, and then having Monte Green out there in the starting lineup, and then Tory Craig coming off the bench who rebounds a lot. Dale and Terry for sure. That's all he does is rebound and play make. Um, and Detroit doesn't really give up offensive rebounds. I don't know. I would say points. So let's see what his first quarter lines are at. Four and a half. Which kind of makes sense because if he continues to play less minutes in the first quarter, then, but most in the second quarter. Yeah. I, I mean. I would, I guess you just mix and match these both guys for the first half, whether it's DeRozan, Vooch, or Kobe White. I don't trust Kobe White. I know he hit, he's coming off a solid game with Io out, but I think you want to first confirm that Io's out because Io definitely eats him through his uh, pretty much every. That line is points, his rebound, and his assist. So you can see this is the game against the Knicks when I was out. His points skyrocketed up. His shot volume went way up prior to that. Really low. And that's a lot of that's due to Io, uh, how much he shoots in the um, first half, especially. So for him, I would confirm. That uh, I was out for. Feel good about it. Good spot for him though. Um, DeRozan, he's pretty safe. I feel like either with Io in or out. But his lines are pretty juice. For, I mean, geez, his 14 half points first half. That's crazy. He's normally 12, but he's normally 12 and a half all season. I mean, he rare, I mean, look at this. He rarely. This is we're looking at his first half log. He rarely gets that. Even when he plays like twenty minutes, which is really high, right? So, uh, what, do, what do you think? I mean, he, he's crushed the Pistons. Two or three games this season, but you know, different Pistons team. Obviously, um, not much art in the RA department. Well, I hate to say it, man, but Booch is probably in the best spot here, especially with that German news. And Crusoe to give his normal questionable tag, he's done. Oh, I was on mute. I was talking. And I didn't even. <laughs> I was like, "Why isn't he talking to me?" Um. Now I said DeRozan's high as fuck, and then I said, "Um, how's Vu what's Vooch's number in comparison to what he usually is? Is he usually sixteen and a half or eighteen and a half?" So, like I said, uh, when he went through that stretch of games where he was crushing, mm -hmm. like, his, and he had high shot volume, he he got up to eight, 18 and a half, mm -hmm. especially in prime matchups. And then lately, since he, he hasn't been doing shit, like he went down all the way to 16 and a half. Yeah, and his so, rebounds look disgusting, what you were showing they us. They look awful. Yeah. So they, ta they, they taxed it. They kind of went middle of the road here. Mm -hmm. They taxed it by one and went to 17 and a half. So it's, it's in between his lately line and his, bat, uh, and his uh, juice line when he went through that streak of games. So... Well, we know you don't like Kobe White, so that you're not gonna play that. What? Well, only if Io. I, I think. I think you consider only if Io's out. Yep, yep. But would you would you feel comfortable playing him? 
I mean, it's a phenomenal matchup, but I won't personally play him. But if people are considering him, I, I would say only if I was out, I would get behind it. Like his shot volume dramatically increases though with Io um, out. Um, but for Vooch, Kobe White's points just... are juiced to hell though too. I guess it's just Detroit. Yep. Yeah, it's a Detroit factor, and they're probably already preemptively uh, planning for if Io's out. Um, mm -hmm. And. I mean, there's no reason to push IO if he's if he, if he's dealing with the injury. Like I said, they have nothing to play for in this game. Um, Vooch, I, if you want to play him, I would just go with the points, man. Just looking at his data, like he's not his rebounding is so inconsistent, and that's just because they have so many rebounding forwards and guards on the team. So, but yeah. Gotta hope that Vooch hits it. He's gonna take what about two, two to three threes, probably two threes in the first half. Gotta hope he hits one of them. Uh, what is he averaging? Yeah, he's averaging about two threes in the first half. So he's usually getting at least one, and then yeah, just he's a fix it near the basket. But yeah, his his RA is all over the place, man. Like that's a that's a huge gap between his nine half points and his seventeen half PR. Do you agree? Yeah, for sure. Because he's probably gonna get you about one as one to two assists. So then you're hoping for like six rebounds relative to his point line. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Um. And then, yeah, I mean, Durandon's free throws are always alive, especially in this matchup, but I just worry about minutes getting pulled back. But, I mean, lately, man, he's still playing 40 minutes. No, that's got to be the thing. DeRozan free throws in this matchup, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's just, yeah. What are they going to be? just got to worry about a full game run. Oh, shit. He's been playing it. I, I mean, we got to worry about it. We've got to worry about it all the time. I guess, I guess, yeah. I mean, what else could you play for him? I, I, I would just consider the free throws. That I think the first half is way too juiced, man. Yeah. Like 14 half points, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. yeah, he got it in two of the three meetings against Detroit, but it's just so high. I mean, we looked at his recent production. He tends, he, he tends to take a back seat in the first half when they don't really need him. And then he turns it on in the second half, especially the fourth quarter. But, I mean, look at this. I mean, it's just... Uh, shot volume so low. I mean, yeah, he's, it's a big reason is because he's getting a lot of free throws in the first half, but... Yeah. His uh, PR... I mean, his PR... So his fantasy has been at 38 and a half. Mm -hmm. Now his PR8... Yeah. Tomorrow is at 38 and a half. I saw that. I know. <laughs> so that's his, what I'm saying. So his, his fantasy is going to be, whoo, it's going to be well over 40 for sure. Probably 42 and a half. Yeah, I don't feel very confident in any of that shit. But yeah, I think, um, I think you definitely consider Vooch's points. If you like to play Vooch, I personally do not play him um, or support him because I just don't trust him. Um, but great matchup. Drummond being out probably helps. Let me pick up one or two more minutes. But I mean, he's already damn near playing 20 minutes so um, in the first half. And then, yeah, Kobe White, if you want to consider his PRA, if I was out. Detroit side, we have nothing because we don't know Cade's status as usual. Um, Duran, he could easily get in foul trouble here against DeRozan, who drives the basket, draws fouls, like we just talked about. 
Uh, I mean, maybe consider full game props because he tends to get it done in the third quarter a lot lately, especially with Kate out. But yeah, that's about it, man. I I don't know. I, yeah. I just worry about Bull pulling back on minutes sometime soon. I mean, I if I was Billy Donovan, Billy Donovan, I would I would start doing that. I yeah, I mean, knowing how we like to do stuff, I feel like, I mean, there's not really reason to write anything down, right? I mean, fuck, we don't want to play Booch for real. We don't want to play DeRozan, it's too high, and we definitely don't want to play Kobe White, so. I mean, yeah. Uh, unless I mean, there's Vooch one that stands total, out to you. Total I mean, yeah. uh, I mean it, we, we've attacked Detroit with scoring bigs all season, and there's no drum in. You want me to write Booch for South Points? I, I, I think you can. Okay. But yeah, it's Booch. I know. I know exactly. But hey. Um. Okay. Uh. What What's the next game on the docket? Nick Celtics. Celtics look like they're uh, not playing anybody, so. And we don't have their props. Like every single player is questionable. I feel like they're not going to play any other starters or something. I don't know. I don't know what they're up to. But every player. Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, Al Horford, Perzingis, Tatum, Tillman, they're all questionable. The only one not here is Derek White. Pritchard. Okay, well. Yeah, I mean. They clinch or yeah. something? Yeah, I mean they, they they've locked everything up. They've locked okay. up. They've they've locked up the Eastern Conference one seed. They've locked up the number one overall seed in the NBA. So they will have home court advantage through the finals if they get there. So there's nothing to play for except dress rehearsal and All stay right. conditioned. But uh, the Knicks have a lot to play for. So okay, let's look at the. They're two games back from the Bucks. Uh, and the Cavs are one game back from them. The Knicks, like, are they can't afford to lose. There's the no one Cavs on the report either. Huh? There's no one on the report. They're healthy as can be. Yeah, yeah. So they want to win. They want to get the job done. Brunson's been on a absolute Peter. hair run. Yeah. But with the Celtics punting in the second half, like they have been lately. You know what was weird, though? They played their guys last game. I'm going to look at the rotation. They did? But I, yeah. I'm going to look again. But, uh, but the games before that over the weekend, they didn't. Right? I know. That's the weird part. And they were getting their ass whooped. Well, no. I guess they took them out there. Okay. I guess yeah, last... They, they, the they two before... The court in the fourth. That's weird how they played through the third into the fourth, though, right? Like, I think game... they, I think they've been playing in the third. I think they just haven't been playing in the fourth. Right? Isn't that weird though? Like, the last game they played. Let me look again. Yeah, I mean, I would just play first half again here, man. Yeah, it's so weird. Like, why did Tatum and Jalen Brown play all the way through the third and half of the fourth? That's so weird. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. They're probably all not going to play. Yeah, I think it depends. Like, if, if, if a lot of them sit, like, Drew... And Derek White, Jalen Brown, guys like, like that, I think definitely can go to Brunson here and a soft matchup against the second unit of the Celtic. Um, all right, he's just killing it in the first half, too. Like, look yeah. at the shot volume. Yeah. Um, and he's getting to the free throw line. It's such a high clip since ever since Tim came out and had that post-game con- uh, conference thing 
repeating over and over again he was fouled he was fouled <laughs> ever since then he's getting like every call um i mean yeah he's getting what five to six free throws down from the first half um Again here, I mean, you just go with the points. I mean, the RA, yeah, he could pick up some assists, a couple rebounds, but it taxed. It's 20 flat. You just go with the points. Um, I'd rather play Brenson than uh, DeRozan, tell you that. Yeah. All right. Um... Hartenstein's an interesting spot. I mean, if Horford and Porzingis are out, pretty soft matchup against guys like Tillman. Now there's here for Ari. Uh, let's want to see what his minutes have been like in the first half. Good old Tillman. Still in the lead. His minutes, pretty, his minutes are pretty down. Is that a Mitch Rob? He's been in and out, right? So, no, I haven't been following that at all. I've been flabbergasted by Brunson and Josh Hart and all his yeah. greatness. Oh, he's yours. <laughs> you love him. <sighs> yeah, and I don't play Dante. I mean, his shot volume is crazy, but... Josh well, but Hart I had 46 minutes last Especially game. OG. Huh? Josh Hart had 46 minutes last game. Usage of 10. Stupid. <laughs> yeah. Brenton, 42 minutes, 45 points. This dude is on a mission. Yeah. yeah. He's running so much isolation. 45 which points is just, which is well, just driving up the um driving up the uh free throw rate when you run isolation so much like that you're bound to draw fouls um i want to say i want to say like him and sga are the leaders in the nba And Luca, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting to see on Celtics, man. Just waiting to see. Um, I don't trust any of these other guys. OG is probably, he seems like he's still trying to get his feet under him with this team since he's been missing so much time. Um, yeah, his, his shooting has been awful, except for the last game. Um, yeah. All right. But yeah, that's the Brunson here. If uh, Drew and all those guys are out, I, I, I'll probably, I might be less inclined if Drew plays. Like Drew is always a solid on ball defender. One of the best. Um... Rockets and Jazz. It should be a good one. I think this is probably in terms of probably over here. Full game. I think this one probably is the best to target. Rockets, Jazz? Um, yeah. The, the, the Kings, Pelicans, it's going to be a competitive. Uh, that could be a playoff preview. Um, mm -hmm. And they, that game is huge for playoff implications, which we'll get to. That, that's okay. massive. Cool. Both teams are going to go. They're going to go hard. Like that game, really big. Um, I know the Jazz have been awful with all those guys out, and I assume they're all out again tomorrow. 
like Clarkson, Markinen. I think so. Connor. I want to make sure. Yep, Clarkson out. Collins out, Dunn out, Kessler out, Markinen out, Sexton out. The whole team is out. We're going to get our, our favorite right, guy, man. Keontae George. No, we go right back to Yurtz here. He should, he should have a field day. But we have no jazz props. So look out for that. Uh, last game, he, when he was announced as starter with all those guys out, he was at 10.5 points against Jokic. Dropped 18. I like him again in this spot. Um... Just very points. active on the class. Just points or just points? Uh, I, do, I would do PR. Um, he, I mean, he crushed the offensive glass against okay. Jokic, um, and he should have no no problem here with Jabari. What center, number? Would, what number would you look at? 18, 16? What do you think? Hopefully, 18, I mean, if it's eighteen and a half, I, yeah, I consider it. Sure. I mean, after, after him dropping, what do you? I think he dropped. Here we're gonna look it up. I think he dropped 18 points, 11 rebounds against Jokic. Oh, I didn't know he did all that. Yeah, bro. He went. He went when hard. I realized I fat fingered it, I didn't look anymore. When, when, he got, when he got time, when he got minutes, when he was on the Heat, I remember. When, you know, the Heat had all his guys out. Yeah, he would ball. I mean, he has a three. He has. He's a stretch big. He has a three point shot. And he, I mean, he's huge, so you can get, you know, get those offensive rebounds. Um, yeah, I remember his get, him getting a lot of rebounds for the Heat for sure. Oh, I didn't oh, know he was sorry, a scorer. Twenty like, points, like, damn. Twenty points, eleven rebounds, and he played thirty-seven minutes. Okay. Now, a big reason of that, obviously, with all those, I mean, all those guys out, but also they needed size against Jokic. Now, the Rockets run small ball a lot. So maybe I wouldn't expect 37 minutes again. But if he plays 30 minutes and it's 18 and a half, I would definitely take it. Well, looking at that 20 and 11, they're going to, you know, they're going to put a 20 and a half at least, I bet. Who knows? But yeah. yeah. But I, 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 I would project him for about seven, seven to eight rebounds. And then you know anywhere from twelve to fourteen points. So. Um, his his usage rate was crazy high in that last game too with all those guys out when he started. Uh, we can look at it here. I, I like him, um, especially th with the entire front court out for the Jazz. They they're gonna they're gonna ride him out here. Um, yeah, I mean, he was second the team to Keontae who. Obviously, he's the primary ball handler in that game. He was right behind him at 22.9% usage rate. So that's really solid for a center um, who's not going to be the primary handler. And then, obviously, THG, when he checks in, he black holes hard. Play yeah. majority of the fourth here. I, maybe we get THG props late because he's a bench guy. I would look out for it if we get it they'll drop it about 15 20 minutes before lock he's a like i said a massive black hole when he's in he's just gonna chuck um southern matchup against the second unit of the um, rockets here so yeah that's about it I, I i'm probably not gonna mess with anyone else it's probably gonna be yurts and then i would look out for maybe we get low lines for tht off the bench um And then for the rocket side, what are we working with here? What kind of lines? Great matchup for the backcourt here and the front court. I mean, all around. I mean, we've seen Jalen Green torch them. Uh, what, two games in a row? Didn't they play like a doubleheader? Pretty sure. Recently, oh, not a double header, but within a week of, of each other, he dropped forty one on the twenty third of March, and he dropped thirty four six days later. Thank you. Now he went through. You went through a slump recently. His, his shot volume went down, but you got to look at the teams he played. 
Golden State has been top five in defensive rating since All-Star break. Miami has always been up top five. Dallas is number three in defensive rating since the trade deadline. And the Magic have been number one. So this four four game stretch here. Um yeah, really bad matchups for him. Uh, and then you know, yeah, he went through this little tear run here. Um, because he went through opposite, right? He played Utah, played Portland, he played Utah again, he played Washington, he played the Bulls, who are very favorable against um three point shooting guards, he played Washington twice, so the Spurs. Um, yeah, so I think this could be a little potential bounce back. I think uh, what, what the Rockets have, they're already eliminated for the playoffs. So this is kind of a way to just end the season strong on a high note for players like him. Um, I look out for his fantasy. I think, you know, Jazz, with all these young guys out there, they're going to turn the ball over. High stock potential. Um. But if you want it, if you wanted his points right now before they potentially juice it, let's see. Sorry. Oh well, Price Pick said screw it. We're already gonna put tax on it. So he's twenty three and a half in the books. If we want to take it right now, minus one twenty five. Um. But yeah, he's twenty four and a half on Price Picks. They already went ahead and said we're gonna put uh, juice on that. So probably it's better value in other books if you can find it. Um, but yeah, phenomenal spot. The Jazz, oh my gosh, man. Guards. Guards versus Jazz and Spurs. It's just money. Um, yeah, I mean, a FanDuel, you can get at minus 104 uh, for 24 and a half. So even at 24 and a half, it's better on FanDuel than prize breaks. But yeah, better GM, Caesar, DraftKings, much better value. Minus 125, then playing on price picks right now. For price picks, I'll probably just wait for fantasy. Um, yeah. Van Vliet. Look at that. Remember when his blocks and steals were one and a half? <laughs> now they're two and a half in this matchup. He's been a stock monster. get it though i mean want to play his fantasy in one slip but what is, are his minutes ramping down now nothing to play for i think a lot of these rockets guys fantasy are alive um no, he's still playing solid minutes he's on a little heater here um 24 and 37 points last two since jalen's probably getting a lot of the attention it's good seeing his shot volume back up again because, you know, he went to these stretch of games when Jalen was going off. We're just having really low shot volume. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a good hedge. You play in Bleed's fantasy one, Jalen's fantasy the other. Um, I mean, Jabari has a great fantasy spot here. Um, you know, bigs, especially that live in the paint, rack up fantasy against the Jazz, especially if yours is active. But... I, his scoring is so hard to trust at times, man. You got a max oh, he's number. Playing big minutes. You got a max number for uh, Green Fantasy or Van Fleet Fantasy in your mind? You I, I think I think it's been um, since the stretch of games. It's gone all the way down to thirty-eight and a half for Jalen Green. I think in this matchup, forty probably goes up to thirty-nine and a half. Really? You think it'll be that low? Thirty-nine and a half. All right. I hope. Yeah, I think. So. Knowing price picks, they kind of undershoot the fantasy projection. Okay. Um, and then what about so, Van Fleet? I have not been tracking his fantasy, so I'm not sure. He, I mean, Van Fleet's kind of coming off a heater, two game heater here. Um, so it'll probably be, I mean, but they, I mean, they've had very comparable lines lately, so it'll probably be around four, near 40, anywhere from 38 to 40. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, Jabari, he's, he's playing huge minutes, though, man. 40 minutes, back-to-back, -back, last two games. Um, it's good seeing that shot by him. It's somewhat going up. I mean, some games, I mean, he's taking 10 shots. It's just his scoring. Really, it's really the thing with him. Um, 
and his rebounding is all over the place because of Eamon Thompson. Like, guys, such a hog on the glass and eats up so much rebounding. But it's good seeing his playmaking has been somewhat consistent around two to five assists. So, yeah, man. I mean, I would just mix and match, honestly. Um, it's a phenomenal spot for all these guys. Um, I trust Jalen probably the most. And if I had to, if I had to rank it, I'd, I'd probably go Jalen, Van Vliet, and then Jabari in terms of fantasy potential here. Um, fantasy top yeah. top play for all of them, right? Yeah, I would just I would just encompass it all because it's a great rebounding spot for all of them. Utah's gonna put up a ton of bricks with all these guys like Juzang, Hendricks, Sense of All. All these guys are gonna put offer free rebounds. Free stocks because of turnovers. Um, so it, it just relying on, I would just want to rely on points. There's so much other potential for them to get it done stat wise. Um, okay. So, so I got yeah. Jalen Green um, 39 and a half, Van Fleet 40, and Jabari what 35? Jabari, I don't know what he's been, man. Honestly, um, I'm just trying yeah, to get it's, to it's, the. It's, it's, probably, it's anywhere between 30 and 30. 34 and a half I imagine okay I'll just write 34 right. Amen I man great rebounding spot for him here oh yeah what happened with Mitt Whitmore he got hurt but he's not on the injury report I guess he's fine I don't know hmm. we don't even have his rebound help. that's the only thing I trust Amen for his scoring is so up and down with all the black holes around him so um. Yeah, I would only consider his rebound. What? what why aren't we getting his rebounds? Is there's massive juice on either way here. Okay. Yeah. They 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 just opened him up at a really high line at nine and a half and put him put uh, juice on the other. So. Yeah, I'll probably get on that. I, I was only going to consider it if there was eight and a half, but. Uh, his minutes have been all over the place too for various reasons so but the most consistent guys have been Jabari Van Vliet and Jalen Green so um yeah that's about it for that one I think that's a pretty straightforward game man um Keontae how high do they got him awful you love him they got him high they got him high 28 and a half but Where is he? Is he down on the board? Oh, I, I think I was looking at his. Now that I have him up yet. I thought I saw 28 and a half somewhere. Um, okay. But he'll be around there. Because I think he got up to, like, what, 26 and a half, 27 and a half with all those guys rolled out? He was 28 and a half at the, at the before tip, actually. Yeah, so he'll probably be around the same. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave him alone. And... You got your revenge? You're good now? Yeah, I'm good. Let's look at the Western Conference here. So, yeah, look at, look at how crowded it is here. So, the Kings, the Lakers, the Warriors all fighting for that eight seed to get out of the out of the um nine ten hole for the um plan so kings can't afford to lose pelicans they have the suns trailing right behind them one game back so they can't afford to lose so it's all crowded here it's six two tenths um so yeah this is a huge game huge game i don't know what the series record is between them we can quickly check but that matters as well for tiebreakers but i don't think the kings can catch them the pelicans would have to lose out for them to catch them which is possible i don't know what their schedule is like but we got our two favorite guys going at it i don't know if lfx is here but LFX, we got your boy j Val and Sabonis going head to head. Which Rick Smiths comes through?
what you think underrated I already took J-Bell under so fuck it wait in the books um where did I take it uh, I took it on um hot streak they had it on on there today already earlier today I took it with um who did I get? Oh, I got a uh, Grayson Allen under PRA when he was uh, not starting, and I went over to Hot Streak. Good old Hot Streak, leaving shit up like that, and I paired it with uh, J Bow under. Thank you. Okay. Well, yeah, the Pelicans have won every single game, including one of the um, in-season tournament games, because uh, you know all these teams in conference only play four times, but they are going to end up playing five times because of that in-season tournament. Um, and the Pelicans have won every game. Can they do it five times? Well, Najee Marshall's questionable. Okay. Uh, whoopty whoopty. And Kings. Keegan Murray. Is questionable. I guess he played through it on Tuesday, but he's questionable again. There you go. Well, the one thing we know is that uh, j kind of owns Sabonis here um, defensively and offensively. Uh, Sabonis really struggles in this matchup. Historically. Good. So, Good. Can't wait to take uh, his under. Yeah, Sabonis crushes him, man. Look at this. I mean, j um crushes uh, Sabonis here. Oh. Uh, Double, I got him at, I got him at 21 season. and a half. So hopefully he doesn't get there. He might though. Looking at that. <laughs> yeah. So I figured out the, the J Val puzzle. Um He basically loses out on minutes when when there's teams that don't have a true big like a Sabonis or whatever, but it also primarily against teams that are running guns and shoot threes. He just gets run off the court. Mm. And so those are the unders you want to target against when he plays those um, high three-point volume teams. Um, so, yeah. fast pace three-point shooting teams. So you're saying you want to go over? No, I will not. Okay. I shall not. All right. Yes. So Bonus really struggles on the glass against them in RA department. Had a really good game, I guess, you know, in December. But yeah, his RA takes a massive hit against them. Um, it's in, it's in Sacramento, though. Yeah. And if Keegan is out, it's a big boost to his rebound. What's his PRA line? 40 and a half? I don't know what you guys think. You want to go under Sabonis? At home in a, a crucial game, he might screw us, man. I say wait for second half of Big Two. Yeah, his second half unders have been pretty nice. Money. I mean, sometimes he gets lucky. You know, the, the price picks caught on. And they, they they bumped it to nine flat consistently, and a lot of times he'll push that line. Mm-hmm. But if you can get at nine and a half, if he's playing well in the first half and they juice up to nine and a half, you can catch that nine and a half points under second half. It's really solid value. He usually finishes right around there, like eight to nine. So, yeah. Um, and for the Pelicans, same old crew. Is Zion back? Same old crew. I mean, look, I'm pretty sure they're all good, except uh, Najee is questionable. Because Zion missed this stretch of games, right? So. They should all be ready to play. Should be a good one. Minus one Kings. Kings favored by one. Um. It should be a good defensive battle too, you know. We've ramped up with kind of like playoff atmosphere here. Um, mm-hmm. Two teams that have been can play solid defense, especially Pelicans, um, except for guarding three ball. Uh, I mean, the only person I ever t- trust is Fox, and he's been killing it still, man. Um, what do you do that last game? He went off. 
Fox is the man. Uh, 55 fantasy against OKC, man. Yeah, he went crazy. Um, and then let's see, he's probably going to get a good spot for him and three point shooting. We get his three, three balls here. I know he missed some of the games. Um, and he's struggled in this matchup fantasy wise, but scoring has been there. Minus the game on January 7th. I remember this game. Yeah, one, one of 10. Just one of them games. What, what are those points at? Ooh. Way too high. Right, Tiger. Way too it high. It's high. Uh, it's a good PA spot for him. What's it at? 33 and a half. Treat yourself. I mean, I like Fox Man, but I don't know. There's a line. They said, here, Man, jump over this. Happened so low. I know he hasn't been getting it done, but back at home against the Pelicans. Funnel defense is going to funnel everything out to perimeter three-point shooting. But Seven and a half is I, not that bad. Not bad, man, but we looked at his data. His RA oh, so bad. But they just have played terrible. The Pelicans have just had their number, man. They have just played some of their worst games against them. But is it going to happen five times in a row? Why is that? Zion and, and J-Val give him problems? I don't know, man. I the Pelicans overall in the season have been pretty solid defensively. Are um, they are they getting Brandon, the Brandon Ingram back for the playoffs? Or is I he don't out? Know. That's interesting. Let me look at what they say. Not here. sure. B.I. Rule I mean, out. He'll have two more opportunities to take the hardwood before the playoffs. Uh, it looks like he will play uh, in the playoffs. That's cool. Okay. All right. But yeah, you can't really take that line they're giving you for Fox. That's that's too much. Yeah. I mean, this is a bonus, man. I think it's worth a stab, dude. Like, seven and a half is so low for a guy that he's not going to want to fuck around with JVL. Like at all, Javo just bodies him so much, and the best way to beat the Pelicans is on the perimeter and funnel it out. They give up so much catch and shoot threes. Um, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll definitely hurt Sabonis if Keegan's out because Keegan is such a assist converter for him on the perimeter, especially at home. So you kind of want Keegan to play. But you know, you know how I have. Kinda... Sorry, go ahead. I was, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, it reminded me when we talked about assists, like we haven't been playing assists really at all lately. Like we used to play them a lot more and they just kind of get annoying. But you know what I found is when you find good spots, like how you are considering his assists, that's a great place to take his alt assists. It, it usually comes through. You know, if you really like someone's assists like that, if you go and take the, you know, drop it down one and, and parlay it with something else that feels like that that's really been good like that really been yeah good. So that's like smart that. yeah for guys like him brunson yeah for sure um i mean yeah, right brunson. now on FanDuel, who usually is i want to say when comparing all these books are the most conservative on their lines they have them at minus 142 um caesar minus 131 so it, Knowing price picks, this will probably bump to eight by tomorrow. So, oh yeah, if you wanted to hear it, that's definitely, um, bro. What's what is that? Minus one forty two on Fanduel. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna be eight in the morning for sure. And, yeah, yeah, they're usually the most conservative too. Like the the they're the ones that like will bump down if a, if something gets too juiced or up for they'll be the first ones to adjust their lines. I feel like. Um, Hmm. That's all I trust Sabonis for in this matchup. Um, but yeah. Do you want to take a stab at his just a seven and a half? 
I think it's worth a shot. I don't hate it. The only problem is we have to play it tonight. You do. So. You do. Well, I can write it down. We can uh, figure it out later if we want to put on a list before tomorrow. I mean, just uh, just do a seven and a half combo and say screw it. Do I, I'm sure Van Vliet's gonna bump. What's his oh odds? yeah. Jalen Green's been getting a lot of them too. Yeah, minus one thirty two, minus one twenty. Maybe not. Uh, what is what are you saying, Ashton Network? A plus underrated. Ten projected. <laughs> hey, you've been liking what they say. Don't lie. Don't no. lie. <laughs> yeah, you have. Hey, you have with like me on, um, you, I see you checking huh? they were with me on Jameson and he stayed under that PR bro and they were with you uh, on a good one too oh yeah 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 uh, um, they're projecting for 10 I'm down with it do we want to do the double assist uh, prize picks play I'm down with that I think it's fun I think got a sure. good shot too or we can just pair this a bonus with something else before the uh, night's he, over. He yeah, I mean, he had seven, seven, six, in all three meetings. And... But that, oh, actually, those last two didn't have us in Goon, so. Hmm. Yeah. And that blowout know. could be coming, and he might not play the full. Utah's so terrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I look at look at the stocks, dude. Like I, I think for him, I, I just want to stick with fantasy if I play him. Um, would you would you want to do maybe, first? Maybe, maybe we can fight some what about first half for him because of this blowout? Now that I'm thinking about it, you think they'll play through with Utah? Because Utah's absolutely nobody. Like, you know, we wrote down all these Rockets fantasy points full game, but we might want to look at their f first half. You think? Seems like they do turn uh, out yeah. later. I don't know. I, I would I would do I would do fantasy if I was gonna just do first half. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. For these yeah, rockets. We don't have it though tonight. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying we wrote down all the full games. We might wanna we might want to change that to first half tomorrow. <sighs> Maybe. I'll leave it. So Sabona seven and a half. If we want to play it tonight, we can. If we don't, we don't have to. But definitely gonna be eight tomorrow. For sure. Okay. Is there any favorable RA spots here? Do, 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 do. I mean, Steph's in a great RA spot, but I worry about full game run against the Blazers. But they, but the Warriors did beat the Lakers, so they still have a pulse to get up, move up in the standings. So, you know, if they had lost the Lakers, that I, I, you know, I'd say they start pulling back on minutes. But yeah, great spot for Trace too against Portland. Uh, look out for his fantasy against Nate here. Trace for sure. We haven't played him in a minute. Um, I mean, you could take a stab at Steph's nine and a half. I mean, he's been crushing that. He's kind of like just chilling on the shooting or trap volume um, and looking to set up others. I mean, you see uh, he's, he's crushing his RA lately. Um, great rebound spot and playmaking spot here. Is it going to bump? I don't know. Let's see. Minus 138, 135. On yes. Yeah. Probably bump to 10. Definitely. But... The only drawback is, I will say the Warriors, even when they get a big lead, all season long consistently have given up that lead. So um, no lead is safe with them. The Blazers have been fighting hard. If Aiton does his thing, yeah. It could, it could stay close enough long enough. So. I like those three you got in the queue, though. Yeah. Um, and yeah, look out! Look out for the Rockets uh, fantasy. I don't want to play in, in, in individual lines right now. No, nope, um, I got them all. I got them all written. Phenomenal rebound spot here for Aiden. 
but you always gotta worry about guys like Jabari Walker and uh look at Jabari man Nine, 10 and a half rebounds that's just insane under that's crazy um you won't go under you're scared <laughs> no yeah I, I would say it's a great first half fantasy spot for Draymond look out for Trace full game fantasy yeah what's your number for Trace 25 is, is, wait is this game in Portland oh it is okay all right, let's do Clay. Is Clay juice? I hope he's not too juice. So Clay is from Portland, grew up there because when his dad was playing, always gets up for these games in Portland. Ah, oh, they juiced him. 18 and a half. That sucks. He loves playing in Portland, dude. Um, played his high school ball, I think, near there. I mean, he's born in LA, but I think yeah, he definitely grew up in Portland. And then you know, obviously, he went to school at Washington State. So, um, yeah, I am. Um, It's, just, it's such a high line. I'm, I'm debating whether you know first first half or not. But one thing is the Portland's been pretty stingy on the three point shooting. Probably stay away. It's such a high line. But if you want to consider a lowest playing in Portland. Man. Um. Yeah, great fantasy spot for Draymond. Like that. Just Keon Ellis. Stay hot, especially if Keegan's out. I don't know. Drop 26, season high for him. But, Under. Yeah. Oh gosh, seven and a half? I can't <laughs> do it. So low. And uh, great spot for Zion, too, man. Uh, but I just don't trust his conditioning or, yeah, overall stamina in a full game. But yeah, great spot against Sabonis. I think he's I think he's had three years of success. I don't think there's been a day where you liked Zion and we went follow through with it and he came through. I, I'm I don't remember the last time. Yeah, I know. Uh, I I was like way back goes first half. I only <laughs> do first half because he dies off in the second half because he just gets He's tired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. My gosh, Hayton. This guy. He just won't stop. He's unleashed. Don't quit. He is unleashed. Uh, I imagine Scoot's potentials have been still really high. Super high. If you want to take a stab at Azari, you know, Warriors shoot a lot of threes. Um, he gets snag boards, but you just got to worry about his rebounds all over the place with Jabari. Like I said, Jabari and Aiton, so. Um, but there should be a lot of long ball rebounds for him. If you just don't want to rely on his um, playmaking. But. He had 15 assists last game. It's all eight. So 20, 23 spike, potentials. Spike. Yeah, all these fight games are because eight. Hey, but seven and a half isn't that high. You could put that one with some Can you put that seven and a half special? Let's look at the odds um, for that one. Yeah, that one's going to be that too, then. I bet you. Scoop. Scoop the loop. No, it's not. 120, 128. Fando's got it super juice too. Hmm. I don't mind Scoot with Sabonis. 7.5 assist special. There you go. 
heard it here first. What do you think? What do you think? No, it's a sis. I mean, we haven't we haven't taken a sis in a while, but just in terms of value, you know, this time of the year I like fantasy um, even yeah. more so. But um, in terms of early night value, those are both going to be eight tomorrow morning. So they, if they you are. wanted to take a shot on it, they uh, are. They are. Should we post in the Discord? Though is the question. I don't know, man. Well, it's up yeah, to you because if it's not, if we don't, we can't put it on a list tomorrow. We have to put it up now. Well, I mean, I, I'll, I'll say this: I, um, Scoot is going to get his minutes no matter what. Like, okay. if the game does go sideways, and the Warriors okay. do do the handle their business like they need to, he's right. still going to. I mean, even better, Scoot's going to get those garbage minutes. And will he have eight in have the game though? To get right? it. Will he have Aiden to help him though? Yeah, he will. Okay. And I mean, yeah, in the, gar- in the garbage time, his, his shot volume will probably increase more so than his playmaking. Yes. But... And that spread is fourteen, so we could be looking at that exact thing happening. <clears throat> All right. He could get it done quick too, though. Yeah. Scoot and Sabona, seven and a half assist special. I'm in. Fuck it. <laughs> oh man. I'm putting the link in the it's um. Just a huh? All these, a lot of these, a lot of these assist lines are gonna bump. Um, That's why we got to do it now. Like I, you know, Van Vliet's probably gonna bump. Kobe's probably gonna bump. Um, I don't know, but CJ's probably. Right there on the line, and then potentially Steph's. I think there was already juice on his, but with Draymond and Chris Paul there, I I, I would just take a straight up assist. Yeah, minus one thirty six, minus one thirty five, one thirty three, one thirty. That's gonna bump. But like I said, um, even though he's been playmaking more, you just always gotta worry about Chris Paul and, and Draymond. So I I like. I like his RA to get another out with the rebounding potential. Um, but yeah, all those lines that we just listed off will probably bump in terms of early value. All right, I'm going to post those two right there. Yeah, and then uh, you want to take a shot on Jalen Green's threes, man? He's been getting right there too. Jazz bleed threes. What is Is it good value? Since we don't have his fancy right now. Van Vliet's heavy juice on the two and a half. Oh, it's about even money line. Okay. So that will move. That will stay there. Yeah, yeah. Um. The link is in the chat if you want to follow the two pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jabari, and most of the shot volumes will be three ball if you want to take a shot. I just don't trust this guy scoring, man, but it's Utah. They give up threes, man. One and a half slow for him right now. Yeah. I hate threes, what? but that's not bad. Want to take a shot on it? That will probably get removed or bumped. Or just uh, just the goblin or demon only, because uh, yeah, they're starting coming in with pre-juice on it, and they're pretty stingy on three-point props on price picks. Um, yeah, man, the red and one get you some dream on uh, three-point right. That looks <laughs> no. like a nug. I, I only like I only liked his three-point prop against um, the Lakers because I knew how they were going to play defense on him. And LeBron said at the game, he's like, "Yep, we we dared him to shoot, and they did not guard him." Oh, his shot is so ugly. Took advantage of it. What? His shot is so ugly, Draymond. You know what's funny? Clay after the game said, uh, "Oh man, Draymond's got such a good shot for him, and and, and just trusts his shooting." Kiss ass. Uh, I think you know Clay's a jokester, man. Um. All right, guys. Anything else? 
You know what's weird though? Draymond used to hit threes, bro. He used to hit threes back in he used years to back ago. in the day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Anyways, is that the last game? Yeah. Oh damn, that was quick. Only five. All right. Damn. Let me look at this time. Uh, how long has it been? Woo! Hour and fifteen. Good job. Proud of you. Yep. All right, guys. It's been real, man. Unrated. Yes, sir. Probably the last NBA stream of the season. Um, All right. See you tomorrow. And then you got you got WNBA coming up. All right. Well, I'll see you here streaming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will. Say. You out of um, here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back. Uh, WNBA is what starting in about three weeks. Yeah. Four weeks. Beginning of back May. Here. Yeah. And the uh, the draft is on Monday. That should be interesting. Cool, cool, cool. Alrighty then. All right, guys. Um, yeah, we'll catch you later, and good luck tomorrow. Uh, finish this. I hope everyone finishes the season strong. Um, playing games should be a lot of fun next week. Uh, they're gonna play huge minutes, obviously, and go hard in an elimination game. So. You don't have to predict, you know, this a uh, series like how it's gonna go because in a series it's so hard to predict game script, game to game because it changes every game with adjustments. But you know what you're gonna get in a elimination game: full minutes, full try hard. So, um, yeah. But we'll catch you later. All right, man. Peace.